Good evening friends, it's Chelsea here. I wanted to make a video reviewing three new manga series that I have tried. So this is kind of like I tried three and I'm going to give you a quick rundown of each of them and what I thought with my new ranking system. I'm gonna be a little shorter and sweeter with this one because there are three of these instead of just one per video. I want to sit here for a moment. I have my cup of coffee with my cute new mug that has this little anime girl on it. Promote course this is not sponsored. I want to promote the new Viz app. It's not a new app. It's just they've updated it and they've added a lot of shoujo and a lot of um, more slice of life series instead of just your typical Viz stuff like Shonen Jump-esque series. There's a lot of Shonen Sunday that's been added. A lot of my favorite series are now on the app. A lot of series that I've been dying to try are on the app and it's only $1.99. Now granted it is separate from the Shonen Jump app so if you're buying that one you have to pay for this this one separately but I canceled that subscription a few months ago because I just wasn't using it enough. I don't read enough shonen to use it. The shonen I do read I buy physically and that's just that. I had no use for that app anymore so now I've got the Viz app and for now it's amazing. I've read so many new things and I can't wait to talk about three of them with you that I've been dying to try so let's just get into it. The first new series that I've tried is a classic. It's called Vasara. This is a well-known, well-renowned series that I believe only got one printing when it originally came out way back. I had heard so many good things about this series, so I had a lot to expect, but I didn't know much about the story. I just knew it was about um, a pair of twins. Like that was essentially all I knew about it. The beginning art style was a little iffy for me. If we're gonna go off of my new ranking scale, I have my guide here. Art style, I give it one to five. Let's see, I'm gonna give it a three because at the beginning, I did not love it. It's very, very um, grainy, which I know that's part of the era of which this was printed and made, but it did get better. So. A three I think is a good in between and I think that it probably will go up as the series continues. So I'm willing to change that at the very end if that does go up. For theme, we're gonna say you've got this set of twins. I'm trying not to spoil too much for you, but you've got these twins and one of them is set to be the child of destiny and the other one just kind of is left behind and people just don't really acknowledge her. And they kind of treat her badly because in this world, the other twin, the male twin, he is just the chosen one. So she's just kind of glossed over and that's really sad. But then she has to take up some roles because of something that happens and she starts to see her own value and she starts to realize there's amount of stress that was on her brother. I think it's a really really gonna be a growth watching this character learn. She makes a lot of mistakes, very bad mistakes, and then she makes good choices so she's learning as she goes. So I'm gonna give that a four because I think that we're gonna get a lot of really cool things from the series as this character progresses. As far as characters go, I'm gonna give it a three as well because while I really, really like our main girl character and we don't get a ton of the guy at first, so I don't even know anything about him, but I like the villain. I think that these characters were gonna have a very interesting dynamic and relationship between each other. I'm very interested in what's gonna happen between all of this. Next is story thus far. I love it. I'm gonna give that a five. I think that the beginning was pretty slow for me, but towards the ha other half of the first volume, I was hooked. Like I'm definitely gonna be continuing this. I'm very upset that it's hard to find physically because I want to own this physically. My hope, and I know that a lot of people who do read digital, the hope is that when they see how many people are reading these titles digitally, like the numbers of people who read them digitally, that they will consider doing like a collector's edition or a second reprint or anything, just anything other than digital because digital is my least favorite way to consume manga, but I do it because I have to most of the time for these series. And it is nice to be able to try something. So these first volumes, I may or may not continue on all of them, but I love being able to t try something out to see if I do want to pick it up physically. And the final is overall wow factor for Basara. I would say, I would give it a four. I'm very intrigued and I will continue it. I, I only give it a four because I have to read it digitally. And I know that doesn't seem fair, but to me that has a lot to do with my experience when I'm reading. I just can't fully go there when I'm holding a tablet versus my book. I, I just, I've 
done it for years and I always just enjoy this experience more when I'm reading a physical book. So highly recommend the series. If you're curious, it's on the app, $1.99. You can try the first three chapters for free. Please give it a shot. The second series that I read for this video is Freyren. Beyond Journey's End. This is one that I was very curious about. I heard some really good things and then I heard some meh things about it. Kind of was just thinking maybe I'll like this one and if not I'll know because it was just driving me crazy not knowing what I would like or not like about it because for some reason just the concept of it being after a heroic journey intrigued me. I'll admit it gives very much delicious delicious and dungeon vibes which I love so far. I haven't read much of delicious and dungeon but I love the slice of life but in a fantasy setting and that's what this is. This is a elf girl who's named Freyren and she is struggling with what to do with her life and herself and learn about herself after her heroic group of friends their journey has ended and they've defeated the demon king and they've done what they needed to do and they got all these accolades and praises, but she doesn't know what to do with herself or her life after that point. So she's trying to figure that out because she lives so much longer than everyone else. Yeah, let's get into reviewing this one. I really enjoyed it, guys. The art style, I guess a four is more appropriate, honestly, because it's great, but it didn't like flip me off my feet kind of thing. It was great, but it wasn't the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Four is much more appropriate for that. I recommend the art style. For the theme, I'm going to also give it a three because I love it, but I could see how other people might not be gravitating towards this series because it isn't just spectacularly awe-inspiring. You don't get to see much of the adventure, at least so far, of when they were in a band of friends working together to defeat the Demon King. You only get to see the aftermath and the little snippets during their journey, which I think is more of a slice of life. And I love those kinds of stories when they're good characters, but I could see how someone would think this is the most boring thing they've ever read. So I'm going to give that a three because I like it, but I don't think everyone will. For the characters, I'm going to give it a four. I like these characters. I think that Freyren has a lot of growing and learning to do. She's trying to learn about herself and the things that she is capable of and the things that she needs to work on for herself. Just because she's almost immortal or immortal, I'm not sure which one it is, and has all these magical powers and knowledge and years to study, doesn't mean that she's better than everyone and doesn't mean that she has no flaws and that she shouldn't get to know humans even though they live a lot shorter life than her. That doesn't mean that they're useless. I'm very excited to see where this goes. The story thus far, I'm going to give it a five personally because it intrigues me so much. I'm dying to get to the second volume here and I want to pick this one up physically. So I think that if I can find a good deal on them used, I probably will. I think this is a little bit more expensive. I'll have to look at it next time I'm in the bookstore, but I think this might be a little bit more expensive series, but if I'm wrong, you can correct me in the comments and I will look into it. But if it is a $9.99 or soon to be more expensive than that, I might still pick it up new at the store if a new volume comes out. I'm not sure how long this is going to be, but I'm in it for the long haul. I really like it. I will be continuing to volume two. Overall wow factor. I'll give it a three because like I said, I like it. I don't necessarily think everyone's gonna like it, but I think that if you do like Delicious in Dungeon, I can't say that word for some reason today, Delicious in Dungeon, you'll like this. The same chill vibe, the same, oh my gosh, I have my dog's doggy bags in my pocket. But if you like chill manga that has like a journeying vibe with friends and food and magic and just fantastical creatures and people, and learning about relationships and the dynamics between each of these characters and their livelihoods. I think you'll like it and I do recommend it if you like things like that. Okay and the last manga that I read for this video is QQ Sweeper. This is one that I've heard Colleen talk about. If you are not familiar with Colleen I recommend that you watch their videos. Started falling in love with them and the content that they create. I just want you guys to understand that if you, which I know a lot of you are feminine or female that watch my content, Content. Usually I can kind of see that in the stats and I love all of you and I appreciate the guys who are here watching or the non-binary folks who are here watching but I want you guys who aren't necessarily feminine leaning or female at all to try reading things that you're not comfortable with sometimes because I read a lot of everything. I read seinen, shoujo, shonen, I read extreme hardcore like gore and action and murder. I read romance, I read 
youth manga, like kids manga. I read a little bit of everything because I like to see what the art has to offer. And I think that shoujo is just where I gravitate because nothing, it, it, I think I am more impressed with how a creator is able to make me feel like I did when I was young and in love for the first time than a shoujo creator, if a good, a good writer and a good artist, more so than I am impressed with the art style of a seinen manga or the, um, storytelling, I guess, of a shoujo shounen manga. I think I'm more impressed with the romance and the, the interactions that characters have in shoujo, but I digress. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> I'm getting on a tangent. Let's talk about QQ Sweeper. This is a series that I felt was really slow at the beginning, um, the first volume at least. It's only like five or six chapters in the first volume, so I was a little worried I wouldn't like it. I started off and I was like, wow, this is a manga about cleaning, not for me, I'm a little bit messy. <laughs> I don't, I'm not gross or anything, but as you can tell, like I wash my hair for my videos, but I don't like style it. I don't wear makeup hardly ever. I don't think I've worn makeup in over a year. I don't know. That, it's a personal choice. So I'm a little messy and that's okay with me. I'm okay with being a little messy as long as I'm not filthy. That being said, this wasn't what I expected. I didn't really know that it was about cleaning. I knew that it was called Sweeper or whatever, but um, I just kind of went into it blind other than hearing you should read this from Colleen. I liked it. I think if we're going to go off of my ratings art style, I'm going to give it a four. I liked it. It was very pretty, very shoujo. I think it has some darkness to it. So it seemed like the darker side of shoujo manga, which is always really fun because you never know what you're going to get. I read some really dark stuff in shoujo. So I'm excited to see where this goes. And it has to do with a lot of your inner monologue and darkness within yourself. So I guess like depression and like suicidal thoughts. So um, just be aware of that if you pick this up. It might have some things related to that in it later on. I've just got a good feeling that it will. If we're going on theme, I'm going to give it a four. I really, really think this is going to be something that I'm going to like. I will at least read one more volume before I make the final call because I want I want romance. Like, I'll be honest with you, that's what I'm after. And I'm not sure what direction this is going to go necessarily. There's a couple characters who might be the love interest and I want one of them to be over the other. So I'm going to probably have to see <laughs> what happens with that to continue. It's a long series though. So if it's still good after the second or third volume, I will continue that. Of course, if you don't know, QQ Sweeper is only three volumes. It's like a prequel series to Queen's Quali. So just be aware of that if you want to go into collecting this, that it's a long series, but I'm reading the prequel before I start Queen's Quality. Next is characters. Um, I guess like a two, maybe two and a half, because I don't know, they, they're okay so far. And that might be where I'm struggling to say that this is a fantastic series because I'm a character driven reader. I, I need good characters in order to love what I'm reading. And so far I'm only getting like bitter, angry, annoyed, superficial character traits, which I know that will probably lead to some growth. But to me, I think you need at least one character who is like level headed and decent within your main group of characters to level out all the other characters being crazy numbskulls. And so far I don't have that yet. I mean, you've got the teacher guy, but he's not really in it that much. So we'll see. I, I have high hopes for it. I think that means that there's going to be some interesting growth within the series. Story thus far, I'll give it a four. I'm very intrigued and I think that there is potential here and I want it to be good. So just for high hopes, I'm giving it a four. We've got this girl who has nothing, comes from nothing. Supposedly they're going to be researching and looking into that and she needs a job and a place to stay. And so she gets one and that's not necessarily a new thing. So it's not like the most unique premise, but what leads after that and the magical system that's in this, I did not know this was going to be a fantastical series, but it is. I think it's going to be a uh, fun to learn what happens in this series and the overall wow factor, I guess a four as well, because if the magic hadn't been part of it, it would probably be like a three. But the fact that there was like this crazy magic system thrown in there that I had no idea until I got in there and I was like, what is happening with these bugs? Uh, I'm going to give it a four and probably like a low four because I don't know how they can extrapolate from that. But we'll, we'll see if it gets more complicated and like what are the inner workings of this system. When I'm reviewing these first volumes, I of course know that it could take a wild turn on the second volume or the 12th volume or anything and be totally not what I think it's going to be or what I want it to be or what I think it is at the moment. So just be aware of that when you're watching these videos that this is all just a first impression. That's exactly what it is. I don't want you guys to assume that I'm telling you 
how the series is gonna go based off of my first impression. It's just literally what I thought of it the first time I read it. So anyways, you guys, thank you for watching this video. That's pretty much it. This video has only been almost 19 minutes long so far, just recording, not editing. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job rounding these up pretty quick. And I hope that you will read at least one of these series and tell me what you think in the comments. If you've already read some of them, please let me know if um, you still like them after the first volume, because I'm still weighing on a couple of them for sure. I think there's only like one that I'm like 100% on, definitely gonna continue. I appreciate you guys being here and watching this video. Thank you so much. Remember to like and subscribe for more manga content. I have been really enjoying the things that I've been reading lately and I hope that you have been reading your manga and enjoying what you're reading and if you don't have a ton of money to blow on physical volumes or you're smarter than me and don't waste the money you do have on physical volumes, you can always get that app. It's got a variety of shonen, shoujo, and I think that if you have a budget that you're trying to not hit that that is a good way to still consume content at an affordable rate and support the um, publishers and the creators in that way. So I highly recommend it so far at least. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.